Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2020 Ford Transit Connect, we're going to be showing you how to install the Draw Tight Max Frame Trailer Hitch Receiver. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure that this is going to work for you. So putting a trailer hitch on a Connect uh, makes sense to me. You know, primarily these are work vehicles or you're carrying a few people around and things like that. Um, so having a hitch back here is going to really open up your opportunities on what you can use your transit for, you know, whether it be uh, pulling a work trailer around or uh, something along those lines, or even using um, accessories like a bike rack or a cargo carrier, um, a bunch of different things you can do with it. So uh, having a hitch back here is, is uh, gonna allow you to get that job done. So assuming looks, you know, the appearance probably isn't a huge concern uh, on the back of the transit. Uh, it's still nice to have something that looks decent. Uh, this one does, at least in my opinion, it kind of angles towards the front of the car and, you know, kind of disappears underneath there. Uh, one of the things I do like is the ground clearance it's going to give us because these connects don't sit super high off the ground. And so the hitch is going to sit up tight against the bottom of our bumper and really maximize the amount of ground clearance that we're going to get. And the same holds true with our bumper clearance. So the end of the receiver tube is actually going to come out past our our bumper here, I don't know, maybe about a finger's uh, width, maybe an inch. And what that's going to allow us to do is, uh, one, make it easy to work with, and two, if we do end up using any folding accessories, we're going to have all the space that we need to actually put them in that upright position without having to worry about them hitting the back of our fork. So with this being a class three hitch, it is going to have that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. Uh, really common size and a ton of different things will work with it. At the end, we are going to have a reinforced collar for a little bit of extra support. And it is going to use that standard 5 8 pin and clip. Keep in mind though, a pin and clip doesn't come included. If you need one, not really a big deal. You can always grab it uh, right here at e-trailer. I do like the safety chain openings actually. They're a plate style and they're really big. As far as inches weight capacities go, it's going to have a 400 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. And that's going to be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So good for those one to four bike racks, for example. As far as hitches maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 3,500 pounds. And that's going to be the amount of weight that is pulling on the hitch. So that is the weight of your trailer, plus anything that you might have on it. Uh, the hitch can be used with the weight distribution system which is a separate component. And what happens uh, whenever you use that is it's going to help your transit and your trailer ride nice and level uh, whenever you're going down the road. So if you're pulling a heavier trailer, it might be worth looking into. But with that said, if you use a weight distribution, the tongue weight rating is going to remain the same at 400 and the maximum gross trailer weight rating is going to increase to 4,000 pounds. But with that said, uh, I always like to recommend it's never a bad idea just to grab your Ford's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your transit can pull that much weight safely. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of measurements and you can use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top and side edge of the receiver tube opening, that's gonna be about 13 inches. The chances are pretty good if you're planning on doing some towing, you're gonna need to get a ball mount that has a rise in the shank. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's going to be about an inch and you can use that measurement to figure out exactly if any of those folding accessories you might have can be stored in an upright position without contacting your bumper. And if you are going to be planning on pulling a trailer, uh, you're going to want the lights to work on it, you know, that way uh, people around you know what's going on and you'll be safe and legal and to accomplish that, uh, you can always check out some trailer wiring. But other than that, at the end of the day, uh, a nice hitch, you know, it's going to look decent and, and allow you to do a lot of different things. So uh, one you really can't go wrong with, honestly. As far as the installation goes, really not too bad at all. Essentially, you put the hardware in the frame rail and put the hitch up. That's really about it. So it uh, should easily be able to be done uh, at home uh, and shouldn't really give you too many issues at all. So speaking of that, why don't we go ahead and put the hitch on together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here underneath the bottom of our vehicle. And what we need to do is get our hardware in place in the frame rail. So we're going to have a total of two attachment points. And whatever we do on this side, we're also going to repeat on the other side because we set up the same way. 
With that said, we're going to be using this as an attachment point and this opening as an attachment point. So we'll go ahead and get this one done first. For this hole here, what you're going to do is take your pole wire and you want the smaller pole wire, right? So the diameter, we're using the smaller bolts for this hole. And you're going to take the coiled end, put it through, and get it to drop out of that hole directly behind it. Just like that. And you're going to take this spacer block, put that over the coiled end, and the skinnier bolt, you're going to thread that on. And you can feed the hardware up inside the frame. So you put our spacer block up there first, and then our carriage bolt, and drop it down. Now for the other attachment point, this one, you're going to take the, uh, the bigger pull wire, put the coil in through there, and just run it towards the front of our vehicle. And the square opening here, it's going to pop out of there. On this one, you're going to take the big spacer block and the larger carriage bolt. Essentially do the same thing, thread this on. I'm going to work this hardware up in place. This one's pretty tight, so you may have to kind of wiggle it around in there to get it to go. Pull the bolt through and drop it down. Now the next set of hands, you can take our hitch. We're going to get it into position. So you're going to drop the fish wires through the corresponding holes in your hitch. You can lift it up. Until our bolts drop through. And we're going to remove one of the pull wires. Grab a conical tooth washer. Make sure the teeth on the washer are going to face up towards the hitch. With these being different size bolts, make sure you have the right size washer and nut too. So just pay attention to that. So just going to take the washer, slide that on. Take your nut. I'm going to get at least one started on each side, hand tight. That way the hitch will support itself while we work on the rest of the hardware. Now we can snug our hardware down. So for this nut, you can use a 19 or a 3 quarter inch socket. And for this one back here, I'm going to use an 1116. Once everything's snug, you need to make sure to come back with a torque wrench and tighten all the hardware down to the amount specified in the instructions. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can pick one up here at eTrailer, or a lot of times go to your local auto parts store and they'll have one there available to rent. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the draw tight max frame trailer hitch receiver on our 2020 Ford Transit Connect.